nifty? Yeah. You don't even want to know what her deal is. But actually, we do. We do want to know what Nifty's deal is. We're going to go into the psychology of who is Nifty and why does she behave in the ways that she does, or at least the possible psychological reasons for them. And if you have any bits of Nifty inside of you, we'll go through a few of the tips and tricks of what you can do about it if you want to change it. All right, Nifty. 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 Nifty has a fixation with bugs. A lot of us can kind of be stuck and fixated on something. Sometimes it's because of something that's happened to us in our childhood or something that's really bothered us. But it's a hard thing often for us to figure out what was the cause of this fixation. Sometimes it's not even the object itself, but what it symbolizes or how it makes us feel. But Nifty definitely has a thing with bugs. And I think that for her, it's linked to her want to be cleanly and also her need to control things because you can't really control bugs. They're going to do what they want to. And for her, I think that they are a sign of a mess and an infestation, neither of which she likes. Because you can also hear the joy that kind of primal joy that she has while she's stabbing them. That's just this happiness, this stab, stab. Like it's, it's really kind of guttural and primal. When we're in that zone of what we call flow experience, we're kind of at that primal state. We're not really, we're, not, we're losing space and time in the enjoyment. She has that for bugs. So it's more than just a fixation for her. I think that her, she finds a certain amount of pleasure, of cathartic pleasure in dealing with trying to harm these bugs. Your line is, we have the cleanest rooms, okay? <laughs> I have to stop it. Because, like, she has this my maniacal kind of personality where she might be kind of dangerous, but she also has these really cute childlike features, which makes her cute and dangerous at the same time, which makes her even more dangerous because you can forget about how her danger in her cuteness. The smile that she has whenever she's trying to do something that a figure of authority has told her, she also seems to be fixated on following people that are in authority and doing exactly what they said in wanting to please people. Got it, I'm ready. Action. Uh, cut. So what Nifty just went through in that moment was performance anxiety. It's a type of social anxiety. And for Nifty, it kind of blanked her mind. If you've ever been having to give a performance and your anxiety level gets really high, you can often forget everything that you were about to say or what you had to do. And especially if you're about to do a play or a speech or have this important moment, it can be really paralyzing when your mind just kind of gets wiped out. What happens is that your anxiety level rises to such a high level that it wipes out chemically your cognitive center. You get so stuck in the fear that you've forgotten everything that happened. Now, usually you know that you have blanked out, but in very extreme cases, yes, it can be that you don't even remember what happened or what you experienced in a way that was protective to us. A lot of people have forgotten situations or even times or full years of their childhood or lives probably because it was really traumatic. Sometimes also it's just that we were not that cognitively aware at that time of our life, and that can also happen. <laughs> How was that? Well, Nifty, you actually have to say the line, so let's roll again. Okay. Action. So what do you do if you deal with performance anxiety? And people can have performance anxiety in certain areas and not in other areas. For some people, being on the stage might cause them a lot of anxiety. For other people, I deal with people that are performers and have no anxiety performing, but in small intimate situations, they can feel a lot of anxiety. One is you wanna breathe, you wanna lower your level of anxiety, and you wanna practice that. The second thing is you want to be able to do the thing that you're frightened of in slow, small steps so that you can feel comfortable. And then the third thing is that you want to put yourself in situations that you feel 
anxious, you want to learn to become counterphobic by practicing, allowing your anxiety system to rise a little bit and then to be able to go down. These techniques are best if you have it with someone that you trust or has the therapeutic tools to be able to support and help you. This is not the time when someone should pull a prank on you and make you feel even more scared. One is you're going to ruin their trust and two, you're going to feel worse instead of better afterwards. And then after that, you want to be proud of yourself for doing it. Serpentious inventor, architect of destruction, villain extraordinaire. <gasps> Ooh, he's a bad boy. And that's another reoccurring theme for Nifty. She's really attracted to these bad boys. And when we talk about bad boys, there's kind of two different situations. There's people that have an edge, that are rule breakers, that are doing things that they shouldn't. And then there's people that will actually treat you poorly. And they're not one and the same. You can have someone that has an edge, that will stand up to authority, that will speak up and doesn't have to follow the curve. And then there's another situation where you can be with someone that will actually treat you poorly, that won't care about you, that will hurt you. And so those are two different situations of bad boys, and you really do want to differentiate between the both of them. Over here, we have our maid, Nifty. <gasps> the bad boy is back! <gasps> Never leave me again. We're about 80% sure she's harmless. Mostly so. And why do people get attracted to bad boys? So for some cases, it's because they may seem like they're leaders of the pack. Those leadership skills are something that's attractive, or they seem to be more rugged or authoritative, or people can be attracted to someone that is strong and that will stand up for people. And for other people, it could be just that they're always rule abiding. And for Nifty, it seems like she follows the rules that are in front of her and she follows authority. And so bad boys might seem like they're more authoritative and they're people that she would want to follow. Because in lots of cases, we have this person that follows all the rules that wants to be attracted to something that's the opposite of them because maybe inside of them they feel like they should maybe not be following every single rule or they admire someone that can stand up to authority or want to do things differently. We're often attracted to people that have traits that we wish we had or that are our own weaknesses. And that makes sense to be able to have people that are different than us to be able to help each other and partner up in different areas that we might have our own weakness. It starts with sorry. Not a bad boy. <laughs> For Nifty, it seems like she's more interested in the image than someone's character and who they really are inside. But sometimes also we're repelled by things that are our own traits. We may not like someone because they're too often apologetic or they're following too many of the rules because we don't like that about ourselves. And so I think that in this case, because Nifty has this thing with authority and she really does follow rules quite rigidly, and I think that she feels like she's kind of trapped by the rules that she's created, that she doesn't like other people that are kind of falling into line either. And I think that that's why she's so upset with Serpentius. She had built him up as the ultimate bad boy and then she realizes that he actually has quite a strong heart and a lot of empathy and care, which I think is one of the sweetest things of Serpentius. Nifty! <laughs> Sometimes I kill mother bugs in front of their children as a warning to others. <laughs> <laughs> this actually bothered me. It bothered me that no one caught Nifty because it broke the therapeutic rules that they had already set out. Even if you disagree with what someone is saying, if you have made an agreement together as a group that this is the way that we're going to deal with things, you have to follow through. You have to make sure that the area is safe for everyone. And you never know what someone's going to share in a group. It takes a lot of risk and vulnerability to be able to share deep things. And so you have to make sure no matter what, that it is a very safe environment. And so it really hurts me, even though Nifty is okay and enjoys the pain. She has some sadomasochistic kind of tendencies where this doesn't bother her. And probably it's a little bit of her own feelings towards herself, like she feels like she deserves it. Sometimes we use pain management as a way to reduce stress, even though it's a maladaptive way to deal with it. That she continues to do it and people are just kind of watching as she continues to hurt herself also, doesn't make other people that are in the group feel safe 
either. <laughs> Pain. <laughs> I don't know if this is really working the way we hoped. Now, Nifty wanting to harm the bugs to be able to, like, hurt them in such a deep way. A lot of people don't like insects or creatures and feel that it's okay to treat them poorly because of that. For Nifty, it seems like that she has this deep-seated anger or fixation to it, that she has an obsession. And for her, I think that the bugs are one of her areas of obsessive compulsive disorder. They're not just something that she thinks about all the time, but something that she has this compulsion that she needs to get rid of. A lot of times when we're dealing with OCD, it's our way to be able to control situations that we can't control. It's our set of rules that we believe that if we do them, or rituals, that we believe that if we do them, bad things won't happen. And it often starts up in times of stress or distress, or when we don't have control in other areas of our life. The thing with OCD is that it can take so many different forms. They can be compulsions, things that we do, obsessions, things that we think, and intrusive thoughts, things that we can't get rid of. Two people that have OCD can look completely different and have completely different reasons for why they have them. That being said, you can completely treat OCD. You don't need to live with it forever. It can really wreck lives very quickly. It can grow from something that's just a rule that you start with and then kind of exponentially grow out from that where it has now taken over your entire life. A lot of times the things that you think that you're controlling are actually controlling you. Work! <laughs> It also doesn't seem like Nifty really has a full grasp of all of the situations that are around her. She wants to be involved in whatever is happening, but she isn't as aware. She really does seem to be kind of taking the place of that id character, the character that is just going through all of those baseline thoughts and feelings. Everything that she thinks, she says, and she just wants to experience, but she isn't aware of the consequences to her actions. The part of her brain that deals with that doesn't seem to have been fully developed. She often acts at a much more childlike developmental level, and so she seems to be much more child than adult in a lot of the ways that she views the world. And that can often happen because of trauma. We can get developmentally stunted at a certain level and never advance from that can with therapy and time and treatment and being in a safe place. Vamanos. And she's so proud of creating these cute little blood cookies. She definitely has a fixation with blood, with murder, with controlling things. And so there's probably a lot of reasons that Nifty's going through this. I would say that she's probably dealing a lot with projection, that she's kind of stuck in her own world, that in her mind is safe because horrible things have happened or maybe even that she's done horrible things herself. And because of that, she's kind of blocked them out and lowered her level to keep her safe and protected from them. We can sometimes do that, that we don't even remember things that have happened or situations that we've been through because if we did, they would be overwhelming for us and we wouldn't be able to cope with them. Nice to meet you. Hello. Mm, I clean. <laughs> it's my favorite line of hers. I just love the way that she says it. One is, it seems like her cleaning is her identity. It's who she is. It's what she does. It's the way that she can contribute something that really, in her mind, matters and makes a difference to everything else. But it's also just so cute the way that she looks towards authority and with Lucifer being that ultimate bad boy. Remember when I fixed that call today? I was there's a certain piece of Nifty in that scene. You can tell one is that she gets into trouble because she was stuck in the toilet, which is kind of cute. But you can see how she kind of needs help, that she's taken on this child role and the way that she kind of cuddles into people to be able to protect her. And I think that that goes into her want to be able to have a bad boy, her want to be able to have someone that she sees as strong that can be able to keep her safe. Because probably through her childhood or her developmental years, she didn't feel safe. And that's why often that we lean towards others to be able to do that. Or in other cases, people will lean towards themselves and try to do everything they can to make themselves strong. A lot of times that would depend on their attachment type. People that are more avoidant would probably want to make themselves strong and people that are more anxiously attached may want to find someone else that is strong 
for them that they can attach themselves to. Also depends on your levels of self-esteem. If you believe in yourself, you'll feel like you could do it. If you have lower self-esteem, you might feel like you need someone else because you don't believe in yourself. Hey, Nifty, what you been up to, girly? Fighting bugs. And, uh, how's that going for you? They're winning. <laughs> but not for long. <laughs> A lot of other times when people are developing OCD, it's something that you can focus on and be able to deal with that isn't all of the trauma that's around you. And so it gives you some sort of respite from all of the dangers or traumas or things that bother you. And so you can hyper fixate on something that you can control versus all of the outside things that you can't and can make you feel safe. Again, it's a safety in being trapped and it's a false sense of safety where you believe that this is making you feel better, but actually it's making you feel better from the trauma that you've created inside of your own head because it was an avoidance to the trauma that you actually dealt with at a certain point in your life. And OCD, just so we can say it, is not always caused by trauma. People that have OCD are often more type A personalities, people that are worriers, people that are doers, people that are good at solving problems. The doers and shakers of the world. So it isn't always trauma-based either. Everything's spinning. <laughs> I think you're done, no! Oh, come on. She can handle a little more. She's like 10 pounds soaking wet and uh She's definitely lacking that set of social awareness. She doesn't know the dangers that are in front of us and she has performance anxiety, but she doesn't have that anxiety that is actually there to keep us safe, that makes you think about maybe I shouldn't do this. And when we're talking about someone that's developmentally very young or is actually very young, they often are lacking that. They will do something first and think about the consequences later or not think about them at all. And I think that for Nifty, she's lived such a sheltered life, in my estimation at least, she's lived such a sheltered life that she is lacking that awareness of what she should do and shouldn't do in the world. She's kind of like that indoor cat that's suddenly thrown out into the world and doesn't understand the rules of how you should go about things so that you don't end up getting hurt. Sorry, fella. <laughs> she has this like maniacal undertones of doing things that she really shouldn't do. But again, it kind of, in my mind, it's not more maniacal. It is more like this experimental, like she doesn't even know the consequences to this. And so she's heard or wanted to do something like children that are playing with matches or deciding that they're going to make their own kind of smoke bombs and they don't know how to do it. And so they're just going to test out a whole bunch of different things. And so I'm not so sure that this is because she is actually wanting to cause harm, but she definitely doesn't mind that it could cause harm either. You're supposed to be relaxing, not playing nanny. Look, she ain't used to this scene. I, I just don't want her to end up in the gutter like I used to. And that's why I'm thinking of doing another video on why Angel really is the hero of the show. Here he is protecting Nifty from herself. And there's a lot of other scenes where Angel is the protector of other people as well. And I think that would be a very interesting video, possibly, to do. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> you can't take that! God, Nif, why are you being such a mess? happens when you say something to someone and their reaction is so much higher than what you would expect, you can tell that you've kind of hit a trigger or a fear of what they have. For Nifty, she really doesn't want to be a mess. For her, being a mess is synonymous with something bad. Something bad that's going to happen or something bad that someone's going to see that in her. A lot of times we're projecting outward what we hope that no one else will see inside of us. So a lot of people that look completely perfect, perfectly made up, everything is is in the right place is because in the inside of them, if you really saw it, it isn't perfect. And we're trying to hide that because we believe that if someone really saw us for what we were, they would reject us for that or they would see all of the disorganization or all of the errors or flaws inside of us. And because of that, they wouldn't want to be with us. And sometimes it's because we don't want to be with ourselves. <laughs> You want to play with the kitty? <laughs> yeah. But Angel does a really good job of soothing her. Right away, try to comfort, listen to, apologize, and then a distraction technique. 
which works really well. But again, it shows kind of her developmental level because these are the same things that you would do with someone that's really young and a toddler. But let's be honest, there's a lot of adults that this would work for us as well. A good distraction with the right timing after you felt affirmed and validated can definitely be effective. <laughs> Holy sh Angel dust. Who's this chiquita? You're bringing me fresh meat. <laughs> Oi! I just want a taste. Because she never tried to bite anyone else. So I don't know if intuitively, just like sometimes animals know people that are bad people and they kind of don't like them, but it seems like she's kind of attracted, but in a maniacal way of wanting to kind of hurt him or, you know, like serial killers kind of get parts from people. Oh, what the <laughs> For my collection. <laughs> she kind of grabs a piece from him like that's what people would do with someone that is the next person on their list like it gives that kind of little bit of a creepy vibe but the way that she does it is cute and creepy at the same time and I think that that's why Charlie said at the beginning we believe that she's harmless we're mostly sure that she's harmless to her friends for people that might not be her friends or might cross her or make her angry mm, not so sure you probably should watch your back Four fingers. So like, where are your wings? Nifty, I don't have- Did you ever think maybe she's sensitive about her lack of wings? Just like her lack of- Yeah, where are your- <sighs> So she says things. She says the things that just are on her mind like a child would. Why I say it's more childlike is that it doesn't seem like there's the intention to harm or to be rude or that this is a backhanded comment or an insult. She just thinks something and then it just comes out, which people that are stronger for the id that really aren't paying attention to it or just living inside of the moment or people that are neurodivergent, may sometimes say stuff without knowing the full social constraints or rules about what you should and shouldn't say. And I really do think that we should be judging what people say from their intentions. Now, that being said, last time I was called out on it that sometimes, yes, when you say something, it can hurt others. So you want to try to be aware, but if you didn't mean to, then you want to apologize and let people know that you didn't mean harm. And for most cases, people are really kind about that. So we want to be able to know that all of us aren't perfect and all of us sometimes say words that we shouldn't and it just kind of slips out. Even for me, sometimes because I don't have a script, I'm just saying things. So sometimes I use words that I shouldn't or I say things that are not the most eloquent or if I'd written it all out, it would have been much more eloquent. Get up, damsels. I shall have the staff ready for victorious combat. You can see Nifty still like chasing the bugs. That's her fixation. That's the thing that she has an obsession over and a compulsion over. Thank you, Pen. What can I do to help? I'm glad you asked, soldier. The base needs fortification. Create a moat around the perimeter to stop a ground assault. You can see that for her, this is overwhelming. This is again, her performance anxiety. When you're dealing with something or you yourself are doing something that you have an anxiety towards, you wanna just do one thing. Focus on one thing and you wanna do it one step at a time. If not, that feeling of there's too many pieces in play for you to be able to comprehend can cause your entire mind to become flooded. The anxiety of like, oh my goodness, A, B, and C, A, B, and C, I can't handle it, can cause an adrenaline overload and then you're not gonna be able to really do any of them because you've forgotten the first thing by the time they've gotten to the next thing. We often do that with parenting that we give six or seven things, but it's the same thing for work. One thing, learn it, feel comfortable, and then move to the next one. That's the way that most people learn and have the lowest levels of anxiety. You can only really learn one thing at a time really well. So don't be too hard on yourself. How about this? If you see an angel, stab it. See, that's really simple. What Charlie said was a really simple direct rule. You take this, see an angel, stab it. And because Nifty does one, she follows authority really directly, that's exactly what she's going to do. <laughs> Unfortunately, Anthony's name is Angel, and so she's gonna stab him, even though she likes Angel. But that's what she's told to do, so she's just gonna follow through. So be careful when you're giving someone that is concrete and direct steps of rules, they may not understand the nuance, and so you have to tell them exactly what you want and why. Losers! Whoa! Hey, you, you got something sticking out of your, your thing there. Nifty! 
without that awareness of the consequences really to her actions. She can kind of go through with the plan of what she was told to do with this maniacal glee, without this even fear of repercussions. Because she doesn't have that kind of awareness, she also doesn't have those limitations. And in the end, we're often the cause of our own limits. And in that way, Nifty is the fitting person to be able to end Adam's reign of terror. Almost makes one sentimental, eh, Nifty? I really like them, Alistair. They let me put on roach puppet shows without booing. <laughs> you can see that Nifty, because Nifty also has this genuine childlike joy, which I, one of my favorite qualities of her, that whenever she does something, she does it fully, but when she feels joy, she can feel it from that real childlike place, which is, I think that for a lot of us, the thing that we've lost in adulting, and I think that we need to kind of grasp that back, not take ourselves so seriously and enjoy life. But you can also tell that she really genuinely means it. And she notices and appreciates that everyone else appreciates her, even for her quirks and unusual things that other people might judge her for. I admit one could get accustomed. Uh, I dub thee. King Roach. Oh, to understand your twisted little mind. <laughs> and that is what we hopefully have done in this video, helped understand her twisted little mind. I also love that their relationship seems so genuine. For Alistair, it seems like Nifty is the one person that he really feels this genuine affection for. So I've got all of you with me. And I love that moment. I just love the way that Nifty hugs and the joy that she feels because I think that it kind of spreads out to everyone else. And that's the thing with emotions. When you have a very strong emotion, it'll fill the room and it's contagious to the other people around you for the good and for the bad. If you hate ads, but love me, or you want to hear all of the saucy words that we have to cut out because of YouTube, then you can just get Nebula. Nebula is a wonderful way that you get to support me, actually support me, and you get all the videos that you love completely ad-free. Like Wednesday, The Boys, Arcane, Last of Us, they're all ad-free, sponsor-free on Nebula. And that's the whole purpose of Nebula. It's a place where high quality video creators can post early videos, post extended versions, post videos that would never be able to survive on YouTube. Creators like Legal Eagle, Nando V Movies, Alt Shift X, Medlife Crisis, and so many more. And I also have a full course on Nebula on how to beat anxiety. You can also get exclusive originals like how they adapted Lord of the Rings, The Time When, and so many more. And I know that all of your favorite streaming services are now suddenly with ads and all of these other little tiny pop-ups and annoying little features, but they're not with Nebula. Nebula is still ad-free and sponsor-free. So you can just sign up using my exclusive link. Yes, use mine. There's other creators that have Nebula and you could use their links. No, use mine anyways. <laughs> support me. And with that link, you can get an annual plan of Nebula for 40% off, just $2.50 a month or $30 a year. Clicking on that link really does help support my channel to be able to let me make more fun videos. They're all early access, extended versions, all kinds of courses, originals from Nebula creators just by clicking on the link below. So thank you for your support and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. So hopefully we went a little bit more deeply into Nifty's twisted little mind. You can let me know what are your favorite moments and your thoughts on the psychology of Nifty in the comments below.